Welcome all you OGs out there, whether you're an online gamer, an original gangster, or just an old geezer like me. This is Julie 1961 for Old Gamers Never Die. And I am on tonight in Atlas, responding to a request from one of the people that watches our videos and was uh, curious about Atlas and single player setting. So I play a lot on dedicated servers and they already have their all their settings all set up and you have things a little bit easier on you instead of grinding on the officials. Anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go after the settings and we're going to go through how I set it up for my single player game. Not only am I going to go through all the settings that I have, but also the mods that I use for single player. In 2022, these are mods that are active. They work as good as anything else in Atlas. But let's do that let's go out there i will go through everything and make sure that you you understand why i've got them set this way and you can look at the mods that i use and hopefully it'll make for a better gameplay for you so let's go to the menu screen and i'll show you how i have things set up okay so right off the bat if you're going to play single player what you're going to want to do is you're going to make sure that you click this single player host menu item. You don't want to go to join online atlas you don't want to rejoin atlas you want to always join through the single player slash host and what this will do is bring up that single player menu and you're going to have two options. You're going to have ocean and can't remember if Blackwood was a free DLC when it came out or if I had to pay for it. It's been a while ago, but if you, <laughs> I think you'll have two options, either ocean or Blackwood. Blackwood was kind of the original single player and they've, they've now added the ocean, which is what I would play if I'm going to get an experience of the game. Blackwood is just one server and Atlas you'll see in a second is much bigger than one server. And if you really want to get the experience, you need to play something more than just one grid big. And that's something that you need to keep in mind if you're playing dedicated servers is that each one of those grids is a separate server. So <laughs> you're, you're zoning from one server to another, you're really zoning from one server to another. So understand. <laughs> People are running these servers. It's a lot of work. And I really do appreciate the, the work that people do to put in there, whether you're going, uh, as I play on Indecent Queens, or there's several other ones out there. You can you know, go do your research and find the one that fits for you. But anyway, let's do single player. This is where we're at. Okay, so now what I've done is this is a single player menu. And if you hit this little button here, we'll just make sure everything is restored to default setting. Okay, so now here's what we're going to do. The way I'm going to go about this is I'm going to try to set this thing up so that it's it's not grindy as much as it could be. You're going to have to do some work. I personally don't like playing a game where everything's just, you know, I just get it all. So the single player playthrough that I do requires me to do a little bit of work. It just doesn't require me to do endless days of grinding, especially if you're playing single player, understand when you turn the game off, everything stops. So no animals grow up. You don't add levels. You don't add levels to yourself. Your crops don't grow. None of that stuff happens when you're offline. So what I've got set up in my single player settings is a way to play the game and enjoy it without having to just play nonstop and never get it anywhere. All right, so let's say first thing we're going to do is we're going to take the difficulty level. We're going to take this all the way up to max, so 1.0 far as max goes on here. I don't know if you pump this up higher in single player, you know, you can put a level five in there. I don't know that it'll do anything. I know in arc uh, 1.0, you can you can put whatever you want to. 1.0 is the highest you're gonna get. And really you need to do that if you wanna get to the max level of vanilla dinos, which is gonna be about dinos. I'm sorry, <laughs> tames, yeah. Arc, Atlas, eh. Okay, so if you wanna get the max level of animals in Atlas, you're gonna want this to be 1.0, which means your animals will top out at about 150, I believe. I think that's the highest I've seen. All right, so creature damage, leave it as it is. Player damage, leave it as it is. The next thing you're gonna to wanna to adjust is your XP multiplier. What I do is I bump this up to five. See, the max it'll go is three, but you can type, you can put in a 5.0, all right? And then the next thing I do is taming speed. You can put this at different levels, depending on how much time you want to spend taming a critter. I put it eight times and it seems to work pretty well. It's not an insta tame, especially for some of the bigger animals like elephants and tigers and lions and things like that. But it does make it so that you can actually get the tame done and you know move on with the game. So you're not just stuck there sitting and waiting and waiting and waiting and trying to get the tame done. The rest of these I'd leave alone. You get down to harvest amount and under harvest amount, I would bump that up to five. You can use these sliders, but some of them don't go all the way up as, as high as I would put it. So I'm just gonna go type them in. The next thing I would do is skip down. 
And you can go if, you know, just, just for giggles, if you want to go through each one of these and look and see what it does, you hover over the text, it'll tell you exactly how, what it does and how it impacts the game. Okay, so thirst strain is going to be how fast you need water again and such. So if you want to adjust those to make it easier on you because you're just getting frustrated and dying all the time, then hey, it's your game. Play it the way you want to play it. For me, I just leave it at the recommended rate. Okay, so then we get down here. Third person camera is I leave on. Admin logging, it's my game. I'm the only one that's playing. If I was doing a host, like a host non-dedicated session, which you can do, I might put it on there, but I, you know, no, not just for me. I like to have my crosshairs enabled because, you know, I'm old and I have to make sure I want to know what I'm shooting at. And then we get down for Snow HUD. Nah, you know, if you want to play, look, this game is a little bit custom, well, a little bit. This game is customizable to the point where you can make it as hard as you want it to be or as easy as you want it to be. I like to have my HUD up there so I know what the heck is going on. So I leave it on. Hardcore mode. Hardcore mode means if you get killed, you're done. Your character, you have to start all completely over. You have to create a new character. Everything you had is gone uh, or it doesn't belong to you anymore. And so, yeah, unless you really want to do that, you know, hey, you be you. If you want to click that button, click it. I do not uh, recommend doing it, especially if you're a new player because you're just going to get frustrated. Show map player location, I check so that I know where I'm at and when I look at my map. Again, if you want to be, you know, all survivalist and, and try to read the stars and remember where you're at, go for it. I'm not that good at remembering. If you've watched me on my streams, you know I have a hard time remembering how to get back to my base. Okay, now here's the next one that you're gonna wanna do. Maximum difficulty. Yeah, this one you need to click. And that again is gonna force your max level up to 150. And it says dinosaur because, you know, frankly, grape shot, wild card, all these, it's, it's, yeah, they're, they're using similar coding and, uh, and it's all the same basic company subsidiaries i don't know you know it's all legalese to me but yeah if you don't see the similarities between arc and atlas you're blind or you're playing the wrong game okay or playing different games than i am that is so then the next thing i would do is let's see here single player settings yeah so use single player settings that's by default it's checked keep it on single player settings are you can turn it off it certainly can and what it will do would make the game more difficult for you to play and it it impacts all kinds of stuff so i would recommend as you're starting it to leave that on and see how the game plays if it's so easy and you just you're just bored turn it off it's going to impact more than just your xp and your entertainment speed and all that. it's, it's going to impact a lot of things but it's hard to see that in this screen or the advanced screen because it really doesn't show that and what i'm going to try to do is go through these things so that you can set it up from this screen you don't have to go into any files and make adjustments adjustments, change your configurations, all that kind of stuff. We're just going to work off this screen. If you want to get into all that, then go for it. But, you know, I just want to make sure that people who don't want to mess with that stuff can still have a fun time playing the game. Okay, so we got maximum difficulty checked. PvP gammas by default check. It's fine. If Again, it's just me playing. I'm not worried about PvP because they're not... There's nobody else shooting at me. Single player settings we talked about. Use corpse locator. That is the little green or blue or whatever color light that comes up from your dead body so you can find it. So I would leave that on unless, again, you want to, you know, play a little bit hardcore and say, well, I'm not really sure where I'm at. Because it will not show on the map. You will not see your dead body on the map in any settings that I'll go over today. The next thing is disable placement collision. So this allows you to put stuff like really up into the terrain. So it clips through the, the terrain. I like to turn it on because again, it's me playing and I like to be able to build stuff into the side of mountains and things like that. So I turn it on. My game, I get to play it how I want to. You turn it on or not, depends on what you want to do. Disable creature taming. Well, you know, if you want to play hard, click it. I leave that off. Same thing with writing. I leave that off. Disable friendly fire since it's just me. I don't really worry about that. Prevent pathfinder downloads again it's just me playing so don't worry about that and then enable wild pirates and what this does in the ocean map specifically and i'm not really sure i haven't played backwood in a very long time but it will provide ai pirates that will you know sail the seas and come after you if you aggro them different from the ships of the damned if you've seen the, the videos and the glowing ships that's the ships of the damned these are wild pirates and they will uh, be in the islands and uh, there are ships that will come after you 
okay? And that's part of one of the mods we have over here too. Okay, so then that's general, okay? So, and if you miss something, just rewind and, and capture what you whatever you miss. We're gonna go to the advanced setting, all right? So this is where it gets a little bit more difficult. That really, this is where it gets a little bit more complicated. Let's put it that way. Because now you're really talking about how the game plays and things that you can do to speed up or slow down how your game plays, okay? So I'm gonna go through, again, my settings, my recommendations if you're playing single player, especially if you don't have hours and hours and days and days to play to get anywhere, this is the way to play it and be able to move forward in the game. Okay, so disable PVE gamma. I would not check that because it gets really dark if you do. And then you're adjusting your gamma and it's kind of pointless. But if you want to you know, try to fumble around in the dark and make sure you got a torch, that's up to you again. Check it if you want to. I leave it off. Allow cave building PVE. I check this box because I'm playing my game and I want to build wherever the heck I want to, right? So if it's a cave and I want to build there and build a base there, then if I check that box, I can do that. So that's what I do there. Enable extra structure prevention volumes. This is if you want to have specific areas where you can't build. Again, you're only playing by yourself. You know what you want to build yourself on, so I leave that off. Disable structure decay PVE and disable creature decay PVE. So if your map's set up for PVE and you click these two buttons, you don't have to worry about your buildings decaying over time. And they will if you don't. Both your animals that you've tamed and your buildings will start to decay over time as long as if you're not in the in the area. If you're playing by yourself and you decide you're gonna go from one grid to the other and kind of hopscotch across islands and you wanna be able to go back to your old base, you wanna make sure that you turn this off so you don't have to worry about that base decaying while you're not there. It won't decay while you're there, but it will if once you leave. Unless you have, if you check these, you don't have to worry about that. And if you check these, that makes all this stuff right here irrelevant. This setting here structure prevent resource radius multiplier there's another one that's just like that below here we're going to put the same setting there but just so that we cover our bases i like to make stuff grow back around my base <laughs> because when you put foundations down and pillars down if you've ever played the game and seen a, a bunch of pillars and ba and foundations out that kills all the growth that's what's happening there's an area around those foundations and pillars that stuff won't grow back at and you've seen it if you started playing the game so what i try to do is reduce that i don't want to reduce it to a point where it's going to grow back up inside my base but uh 0.35 seems to work really well for that and i don't have to worry about it we get down here poop interval i leave it as it is if you want more increase uh i think it's reduce it right higher numbers increase how frequently the character yeah so if you want more poop bring that number up some if you want less, then reduce it. You can go down into the decimals if you want to. So then let's go to egg lay intervals. This is how quickly an egg laying animal will lay eggs. So like chickens and things like that, how fast will they lay eggs? And it's the interval between the laying of the eggs. So if you want it to go faster, you actually make a lower number. I like to put that at about three. That That's uh, not 13. <laughs> I've waiting for a long time for eggs and bacon three so that they're laying eggs but i'm not getting so many eggs that it's just ridiculous the next thing that i do again this is you're playing single player so when you're not there nothing is happening and if you want to have animals that you're breeding and try to breed better stats or whatever else then you want to be able to, to to breed your animals enough where you can get those generations to go so you leave it at one it's going to take a while this is a big reduction but what i do is for the mating interval so this is the time in between animals can mate i put that at 0 0.005 which means pretty much as soon as they get done they're ready to go again again my preference i don't want to sit around and wait for this stuff if i want to breed animals i want to get it going and then i can go do other stuff the next thing is egg hatch speed now egg hatch speed and gestation for animals that don't have eggs this is the same metric so if you don't want to wait around and wait around for the animal to either be born or to hatch then you raise this number and my egg hatch speed I run on single player is 3.0. For an elephant, that means it's about 15 minutes of gestation period. Again, if I don't touch any configuration files, right? So you can adjust all this stuff in the coding of the program. If you're not comfortable with that, that's why I'm trying to give you this stuff. If you want it to be faster, make that number bigger. If you want it to be slower and you want it to, you know, not have to worry about it while you're doing other stuff, then you can make it lower. 
Baby mature speed is how fast the baby matures. I make that 5.0. That's about right for me when I'm looking at it. The baby matures at a rate where it will mature fast enough where it usually doesn't starve to death before it gets to juvenile stage where it starts eating out of the trough. So that's just my preference. If you want to make it take longer for the baby to mature, you can cut that back some. If you want it to be faster, you can bump it up. I've run it at 10 and it <laughs> you have an elephant be born and it just kind of balloons up on you really fast. It's kind of silly looking, but hey, whatever you want to do, it works for me to put it at five. And I did not have any animal that I bred that ended up dying from starvation before it got to juvenile stage and could eat out of the trough when I was away. So this kind of prevents you from having animals starve out if you get you know tied up with something and you can't get back over to the base before the baby gets born baby food consumption speed i've got that at 2.0 just you know make sure they're eating harvest health are left alone resource respawn period say that three times fast that's how fast things respawn once you harvest them right so you go out and you harvest a rock or whatever you know again single player when you log off everything stops and i don't like to be getting back on and I still don't have any of the stuff respawn. So I take this number to 0 0.05. And that seems to get stuff to respawn pretty reasonably fast so that it, you know, I'm not waiting around for three or four days of playing before a tree comes back next to my base because I cut it down. The baby cuddle interval multiplier. This is how often the baby needs to be cuddled. I put this at 0.5. And what ends up happening with the tames that I've raised so far is pretty much as soon as they're born, they want to be cuddled and I do it once and they're done. The imprint's finished. Again, if you want to spend the time and do multiple imprints and, you know, have at it, just make the number bigger. But I'd rather go ahead and get this part over with and just let the baby grow up. Cuddle grace period multiplier. This is how long it can take you to get back to the baby to make sure that you get that cuddle in. I want to make that as long as I possibly can so I don't have to worry about it. So I put that at 50 and then the bottom one, I put at 40 just because this is how long it takes you in case you miss it for it to start actually losing imprint quality. Again, these are just settings that I set, but it's to keep me from having to lose imprint just because I get distracted. I got other stuff going on. As far as the baby imprinting stat scale multiplier, I'll bump that up to three. And that just gives them a little bit more of a umph when you imprint them. So it's, you know, it's worth imprinting them. You don't have to do it. Uh, as long as you've got it set so that it'll imprint, it'll it'll do an imprint, but it just won't get as many points when you're riding it. And since you're the only one that's going to be on there playing and riding it, then you ought to get the most out of it. I leave the day-night cycle alone in Atlas. It seems to go pretty well. I got a lot of stuff that I can do during the evenings to fix boats and fix stuff that I, it doesn't bother me to have the night about the same time as the day. The spoil timer I just leave alone. We get, you've got lauders, you've got different things to increase your spoil time. Some of the mods will do that too. So I leave that at zero. Item decomposition time, again, I leave at zero because this is how fast stuff despawns once it's out of your inventory. And I don't want that stuff sitting around all day. If I dump in it, I'm, I want it to go away. Corpse decomposition time. This one, I bump up to three. Just because, again, if I'm trying to get back to where I died and get my body back, I want it to be there long enough for me to get over there. So I let that run a little bit longer. So I multiply that up by three. This is what I talked about earlier around the resource radius. So this is how close resources will respawn around you, the player. And this one, I also put at 0.35 and then around structures I put, put at 0.25. So then we get to crop growth speed and crop decay speed. So they're similar crop growth speed is how fast stuff grows. Crop decay speed is how stuff, how fast things rot while it's in the crop plot once it's, you know, rooted out. Since none of this stuff is going to change while you're offline and you don't want to be farming your whole time you're on, I bumped this up to max and just put it at six for both of these so that I get the crops growing as fast as they can and it takes them as long as possible to decay so I'm not losing stuff when I you know get stuck somewhere else. As far as the creature stats per level, tame creature stats per level, I leave all this stuff alone. I don't make any modifications to any of this. That's already been made in, in the other changes that we've made before to impact that. I get down to experience modifiers for generic. I've got it bumped up to three. For killing things, I've got it to 1.5 because, you know, I figure if you're going to put some risk into killing something, then you ought to get a little bit more reward. Harvest, craft, and special, I leave at one. It doesn't 
adding more to it as far as max experience points creature max experience points i just leave those as zeros i i, I don't have max experience points levels on my, on my playthroughs if you want to put them on there to limit how high you can get and see what you can get you know how fast you can get there i i don't i don't know the reason to do that but i just leave it alone only allow specified engrams is if you want to exclude something particular from the game again i, I would not you know if you're going to play by yourself you're you can limit your own self show floating damage text i, I leave that check so i can see how much damage i'm actually doing when i'm attacking something and then we'll go down to supply crate loot quality i bumped that up to five because again, it's just me and I, I'd like to get as much as I possibly can get. And the same thing with fishing loot. I don't fish, so eh, I don't know that it's gonna do me much good, but I bumped those two all the way up. And then I leave fuel consumption alone. And then this one increased platform structure limit. I put it up to five. And that's it. That's all the settings. Nothing changed. I didn't go into any I and I settings. I didn't change anything in the you know core game files. This is just what the game gives you to make adjustments to. Okay. So those are the adjustments I made. Now let's talk about mods. If you're playing on PC, you've got the option to put mods on. And I'll go down the list of the mods that I use. Similar to dedicated service, what I try to do here is set up a list of mods that make the game fun and enjoyable, challenging, but but not excessively grindy so that it just drives you crazy. So I'm gonna go through these real quick and what I'm gonna do is you can go to the descriptions on each one of these in Steam and see exactly what it does, but I'm gonna kind of give you a quick description. And the order of these matters too. You wanna to, want to make sure you put mods at the top that need to be there so that other things don't get modified on top of them. So, you know, if you're gonna have a bunch of ship mods on here, you want them to have this one up front because you want it to override everything. Okay, so here we go. Custom shipyards. What custom shipyard does is it gives you shipyards that have snap points on them and they cost no gold to make the ships on and you can make any ships you want so you can make modular ships you can make regular ships you can make modded ships in these custom shipyards so it's a great thing to have because now you don't have to go find gold to build a ship i don't know why atlas ever did that it wasn't set up that way when it started and i stopped playing before the modular ships came but uh, since i've been back modular ships suck i would not build another one if you've never built one and you want to see what it is it's just resources and you get popped in a ship. But those things are so wonky and quirky. It's a waste of material. I, I get it. The story behind them is that with all these custom ships out there, it was draining the server's bandwidth and it was impacting the stability of the game. Okay, well, part of the reason people played Atlas was to build ships and customize them and, and make them their own. And you take that away from people. I think that's what drove a lot of people away back in that time period. It drove me away. I, I, I had no interest in doing that. Thank goodness that you could still build your own ships and especially in single player and dedicated servers you can do that so these custom shipyards it's one mod that i recommend highly that way you get straight into shipbuilding and you can build the ships that you want to build you can still build the modular ones if you want to you know if you just like you don't know what you're talking about modular ships are great go for it build you some i don't like them i think i think they're wonky and they're glitched the next one i would put and in this order i would put revy's mods core and this is a mod that basically talks to other mods to make them work together Together. Several of these ones in here are made by Revy. So having this mod in here is a requirement for those other mods to run. It also helps those mods talk to others so they don't conflict. So I put that close to the top of your mod list as well. Same with Tame Overhaul. In fact, I think Tame Overhaul is one of Revy's mods. This one will give you different options with your, your Tames. And one of the things that frustrates people in official Atlas, did me at least, is when you go to breed your animals, they can only breed in certain places. So a temperate animal can only breed in a temperate zone. You can only hatch the eggs in a temperate zone and blah, -de blah, -de blah. So you know, you're in a desert island and you somehow you get two bears you can't breed them there. You have to take them to a temperate island where they have the right temperature to breed. One of the key things about this tame overhaul is it eliminates that. You don't have to worry about that. You breed your animals wherever you want to, wherever you are. So it's a huge time saver for people playing single player because the map is large. You don't want to be trying to sail your boat all over everywhere hauling your animals around. That'll glitch your animals out. You'll they'll disappear sometimes. So having them on land is a good thing. <laughs> 
at least these days they don't usually float away when they're on land. I have had back in the day when Atlas first started, bears used to float off like you know helium balloons every once in a while. You just be you know they're they're walking and next thing you know they get higher off the ground, higher and unless you could whistle them down before they got too high, they just poofed out into the ether. Anyway, back to Tamar Raw. It lets you breed animals wherever. It does modify the animal size some, and it also institutes some loot animals and things like that to make the game more challenging. I would encourage you to read the mod description on all these mods, but this is one you might want to look at, especially if you are into getting into the configs and setting the game up the way you want to, because there's a lot of config settings in this one. Playing it just the way it is, it works fine. The only thing that I would say I don't like so far is that without any making any changes to it, the elephants are set to like half size. So they're full size until you tame them. <laughs> and then the next time you come back, they're like pygmy elephants. Again, can be changed. It's customizable in the conflicts. I'm just trying to give you things that you don't have to do that. That is one drawback to this mod. If you don't change anything, that's what you're going to have. Some people like little elephants. They fit better in boats, that's for sure. Atlas Shipwright is a mod that, that gives you some uh, alternatives on how to set your ship up and making different kind of ships available to you. Different classes of the same ship, like a brig might have a warrior class and a luxury class and a exploration class that kind of stuff is really important if you're gonna you know be sailing the seas and you want to have the right stuff out there especially if you're gonna have the pirates out there hunting you down the clinger mods these two mods are a freaking awesome clinger has several more mods out there that I'm kind of eh, hot and cold about but these two are amazing the, the extra ships he puts in in this one are cool and customizable and the additional parts reforged make some really neat crafting stations that fit in small areas so whether you're trying to make a small house or, or a small base or you're trying to just fit it in a small ship this is a really good mod to have beastmaster again is it helps you with how you're taming stuff so it's a, this is an, a big mod it has a lot of things you can configure in it if you're into that if you don't want to configure anything it still gives you some help around taming architect is a building mod again it, it allows you to build some things that you would be able to build otherwise same with rustic buildings i like these two because they give me some options of how i want to build instead of just a new generic vanilla building pieces that Atlas comes with. The Spuck Structures doesn't really give you a whole lot of new things, but what it does is it allows you to pick stuff up. If you played Art and you played with S Plus or Super Structures and you like the ability to pick up stuff after you put it down or maybe you put it down a long time ago, you want to move it or you want doors that open and close by themselves and things like that, this is the mod for you that replaces that. So that's one that I put on all my playthroughs. Echoes RP decor continued is one you'll really want to get especially if you're an rp and you just want to you know again you're your single player if you don't want to get involved in all that stuff and decorating your house fine but it's kind of cool to do it gives you some new things to use there are two of these one is discontinued and it was basically given up to i think the continuum is in the group that picked this mod up and basically put the continued on it so yeah this is the one you want and you've got a lot of bunch of decor things that you can use in the game pick up hammer transfer hammer admin tools this one is really good this is the one that i prefer there's there's a pickup gun similar to arc although it's a, like a flintlock pistol so it's you know period uh, accurate i guess but this one actually gives you a hammer that you use like a repair hammer and it has the mini game like you you would use on a ship so when you're doing it you have to do the mini game and it keeps you from accidentally <laughs> disassembling something that you didn't want to disassemble the hammer looks kind of similar to the regular repair hammer but it's, it does have a different emblem on it so it keeps it apart but yeah this is a good one and especially for things like stables that can't be picked up this lets you pick them up or like platforms that you know you get the stone cliff platforms you want to pick them up later you can use this and since you're playing the mini game if you go out there you try to disassemble it and you're like oh oh that's not what i wanted to do just fail the mini game and it doesn't pick it up ship repair crew is a really nice small mod to put on it basically puts a little dude if you watch my streams you can see the little skeleton guy that i have on all my ships that basically repairs the ship it works while you're not anchored and it also gives you a buff when you zone so that ships of the damned and any of the ai pirates will ignore you for a period of time so that way you're not zoning over into a new area and getting slammed because you happen to zone into a you know <laughs> 
a bunch of pirate crews. Farsight's a good one because it does give you a little bit better range on what's out there. It's it's a little bit wonky because when you look out, it may look, make the ships look like they're you know, turned upside down or it may look like one green ship and you get closer and it's four of them. But it, you know, it'll track so that when you get closer, especially as you build your skill set up with the Farsi and stuff, it really is handy to have. This one here, Atlas Stables, I, this is cool. If you've played Ark and you, you're familiar with cryopods, this is the, the Atlas version of that. Except for the cooler thing is this is tied to your Steam ID. So it goes into the Steam cloud and that way, if the stable gets destroyed, your stuff is still there. And you, you can pull stuff down out of the stables in different servers. You can just go, like if you go from one zone to the next and you put another stable down, you can pull all your animals out, put them all back in and they'll be there the next time. So great one to have. The Magic Flask works like the cryopods. And there's a gold bank. I don't really care for the gold bank because I can't get it to work right, but that mess may be me. But the other two pieces are well worth having the mod on there. Mythical Compass is an animal finder. It, it, it'll tell you where stuff is. So if you are one of those people like me who tends to lose their tames, you know, when you're traveling around and you forget you got six cats and you can't find them but five, this will tell you where the other one is, especially if you've given them a unique name. Item Grinder is exactly what it says. It'll grind up stuff. You can set the configs on this to grind even things like blueprints in the gold but it'll also just generic will grind up extra stuff and you get your resources back more crops is really cool because it allows you to grow crops anywhere another issue that people have when they're playing out a single player is in the base game you've got to get soil wood whatever to build the crop plots from different places to be able to grow different crop which is a huge time consumer this mod here will give you a little seed table where you can get the basic stuff you can plant pretty much any any growing thing even down to beehives you can plant and get stuff out of it so really a big time saver it keeps you from wasting time traveling from island to island trying to find resources and to grow the crops there the pirates roam mod is exactly what it says you will have pirates out on the open ocean they'll be ships just like yours they will look like player ships they work like player ships they will attack you they will repair themselves if you watched my last stream i took a couple out and then one of them back tore me up they are no joke they're not like the ships of the damn that you can just kite around and, and take out and the loot that you get from them is is good too so just a fun way to spend time out on the ocean in the game marvelous spyglass if you again if you feel it for me with arc and you've seen the awesome spyglass this does something similar it tells you the stats of the animal when you're looking at it, it does cost mythos to make but you know you'll get that as you're playing anyway so it's not like your first spyglass, but it will be one that you'll use a lot once you get it. Better Kraken. When you get to the Kraken part towards the end game, you'll be glad you put this in here. This one is not supposed to be in here. Custom sales. I do not. That's been discontinued. Same with sub. Okay. I don't know how those got there. Okay. And then I don't use this one. I put it on here just so that I can point it out. Death recovery mod. There's a similar mod to this in Ark. And it's basically you build a tombstone out of organic paste and stone. And you can recover your stuff if you die. You just go over, hit E, and it gives you all your stuff back. Providing some weird stuff doesn't happen. The only difference here in Atlas is, like I said earlier, each grid is a separate server. So this mod will not work from grid to grid grid but you would have to put a tombstone in at every server you're in for it to be able to recover if you die in that server so if it's something that you're you know concerned about you you're worried about you're gonna lose your stuff this is something you can do to do it i don't use it anymore especially in atlas because you know what if i run the settings like i have them right now i can make most stuff back and if I can't, I'll just go get my tames and go out and do treasure hunts and find the right stuff. Those are those mods that I would recommend you put on a single player game. They do work. They all work together. It loads. It doesn't crash. It doesn't time out or go into conniptions when you put all those mods on there. There's what, 23 of them, I believe, is the total. So it will require some disk space. But if you're playing Atlas and Ark, you've already bought into the idea that you're going to be using a lot of disk space because both of those games, yeah, the, the game itself and then all the mods, yeah, I, I don't even like to look at the size of my mod directory on those two games because I test a lot of mods and I just leave them on there and forget and then yeah anyway so if you're looking to play single player follow the settings that i've set up if you want to make it harder or easier you can adjust them either way try it out see if it works for you you know if all else fails you can go back and hit that reset that we talked about up the top left the little arrow turny thing and 
reset it all back to default. So you can't break anything by moving things around in that setting. So give it a shot, see what works for you and makes the game a little bit more enjoyable. I love playing this game. It can be very relaxing, but it can be very grindy if you're just setting on the, um, the vanilla settings or playing on the official servers. If I was recommending Atlas to a brand new player, I would say either play it single player, mod it and adjust the settings or find a dedicated server to play on. Because frankly, the official servers right now, uh, and there's, there's so much stuff going on. I would try to look for a dedicated server to play on. Similar to what I play on in Decent Queens. Again, there's other ones out there. They've really done me well. So I, you know, I don't mind dropping their name and the link to their website is going to be in the description of the video. But yeah, if you're going to play and you want to play and not drive yourself bananas, I would not play on the officials because it's, it is really salty. And at 1x, everything takes forever to get to. I mean, you're talking about raising a baby elephant that takes days, not in-game days, your days real life days i you know i have a great time playing it so i i highly recommend the game the graphics are cool the gameplay is awesome the ship battles are a lot of fun but yeah just just pick the way you want to play it if you do try to go on the officials and you find yourself like me going in there and the first island you go to has been pillar spammed to the point where you can't even put a bed down then yeah go find a dedicated server to play on and have some fun or i'll play single player i did want to show you also that when i was talking about servers and how big this game is you you can play the Blackmore and, and play on one server and, and you can experience part of the game. But if you want to experience the real game and the ocean travel and the building the ships and going from island to island, you want to play the oceans. And this is why if you go to, this is your Atlas and this shows you where you are on the map and you see that grid right there, that's a server. I'm in B8. Okay. I'm going to zoom out. That's Atlas. <laughs> On your single player game, these are all the servers and each server is going to have four or five islands in it for you to go visit. So if you want something that you can go out and play and have fun and go to a bunch of different places and, and do that, you can play this for a long time. It can get monotonous. The travel between islands is a little bit tedious. They have put in trade winds to make it go faster. But if this is daunting to you, look at the dedicated servers. The uh, Indus Quench just went to seven by seven map. So they have everything there that would be on the major map, the Power Stone Islands and the boss caves and things like that and the portals. You can play Blackmore and play in one box or you can play this and play all over everywhere give it a shot if you've not played in a while and you've got the game and you're like ah, you know it was just such a grind and i don't want to play it anymore well go try these settings and see if they help you they work try the mods if you're on pc they will make the game of life a little bit easier most of them are quality of life stuff that makes it so that you can get stuff done faster and if you watch the uh, streams that i've done you see it doesn't take me you know days to tame something it takes me minutes and that works for me. It works for my schedule. If you want to play days at a time on all the time, then that's fine. But I don't have that kind of time to play. So I like the games to kind of move forward. And that's, this is a way to make it happen. Well, thank you so much for coming. I really do appreciate you spending the time with me today. If you enjoyed the video, please make sure you give it a like. That really helps me out with all of the YouTube arisms that are out there and gets the video out there for more people to see. If you've never joined Old Gamers Never Die and subscribe to the channel, hey, reach down there hit that big red rectangle it doesn't cost you a dime and hopefully you're watching things that you enjoy to watch we have a blast on the streams i do seven days to die with a group of folks that is always hilarious <laughs> it's zombie apocalypse wood could be more funny than that atlas arc v rising there's a lot of games out that i play and try to get those out there on the streams for folks to see as well if there's something that you saw in this video that you don't quite agree with and you think it could be done differently hey leave a comment in the section below if you've got better ideas on mods drop those in there too for the new people that are starting to play and hey maybe i'll give them a shot and see how they work if you've got interest in seeing exactly what the mod does in the real setting then i can do a, a playthrough thank you again for coming i appreciate it y'all take care have a good evening and this is julie signing out